So what does it mean that Aaron Judge has not gotten an extension yet? Something that's always been interesting to me is that the Yankees like to hand out big contracts to free agents, even guys who haven't proven that they can play in New York. Meanwhile, they tend to take extremely difficult stances with their own players when it comes time to renegotiate. When Andy Pettit left the Yankees to pitch for the Astros in the 2003-2004 offseason, one of the reasons was because the Yankees didn't try hard enough to sign him. Eventually, he had a handshake deal to take $31 million from the Houston Astros, and only then did the Yankees up their offer to $39 million, and Andy rejected that on principle, not wanting to go back on his handshake agreement with the Astros' owner. When Derek Jeter was a free agent, the negotiations were particularly tough, and Brian Cashman reportedly told Derek Jeter to his face that he'd rather have Troy Tulowitzki playing shortstop for the Yankees. Jeter is known to take even the slightest bit of disloyalty in an extremely personal way, and I'd argue that his relationship with the Yankees hasn't been the same since that offseason. He should be working with the Yankees right now, not the Marlins. And I get it. He bought into the Marlins. He wasn't going to be able to do that with the Yankees. But if he wanted to, he could have been an executive with the Yankees and made endless money and helped to shape the team for decades. But because Cashman told him to his face that he'd rather have Troy <laughs> Tulowitzki, Jeter's place with the Yankees has been reduced to the occasional appearance to honor teammates. The 1998 Yankees negotiated especially hard with Bernie Williams, who was asking for seven years and $70 million. After constant stalling, Bernie eventually became a free agent, and the Yankees ended up having to pay seven years and $87.5 million, which was still not as much as he was offered by the Boston Red Sox and the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Yankees undervalue their own players in free agency. They tend to overvalue them as prospects, which we'll get to in just a second, but they definitely undervalue them in free agency. The lesson here is that the Yankees need to pay attention to what happened with Bernie Williams and avoid paying more. Aaron Judge seems motivated, saying during a recent batting practice session that he believes he's going to hit 50 home runs again in 2022. We know he's done it before. Why not do it again in a contract year? With the rising costs of free agents, what if he does? The Yankees could end up paying a lot more to secure the newly married Judge than if they signed him right now. The smart move for the Yankees offseason would have been to re-sign Aaron Judge before the lockout so that the team would know how much money they have committed going forward. Now, because of the uncertainty with Aaron Judge's contract, the Yankees may need to forego other big free agents such as Carlos Correa, which makes you at minimum several wins better in 2022. It's a tricky situation and the Yankees have only themselves to blame.